everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Bits. This week I'm going to be talking about computer power supplies. This is a request made by YouTube user W3.com. I'm going to be doing this in two parts. The first part is going to be talking about what power supplies are, how they work, and also talking about rails. The second video is going to be talking about different connectors on a power supply, um, what voltages each one offer, etc., and talking about choosing an appropriate wattage power supply for your computer and additional specifications to consider when you're looking to buy a power supply. So let's get right into what your power supply is doing. The power that comes into your house is in the form of AC power, alternating current. This is good for being sent over long distances like power lines. However, the parts inside of your computer use DC power. Uh, this is better for sensitive electronic devices like the ones inside of your computer. What your power supply is responsible for doing is converting that AC current to DC current. In the U.S., uh, the power in your home is going to be 120 volts, as well as, well as in a few other places in the world. And in Europe and a few other places, it's uh, 220 volts. So make sure you know what voltage your home uses and ensure that you get a power supply that's compatible with that. A lot of them now are compatible with both. However, some aren't, and some require you to manually change the switch on the back to select what voltage um, your home lines are using. So you want to make sure you get one that's compatible with that. And if you do have the switch, make sure you set it the right setting. I've watched ones not set to the right setting catch fire, so be very careful with that. So in addition to converting from AC current to DC current, your power supply has two other responsibilities. Dividing your voltages into smaller voltage rails and uh, protecting against electrical spikes. Let's talk about the voltages first. Um, basically the parts inside of your computer use one of three voltages or, or a combination. Uh, either 12 volt, these are indicated by yellow cables. 5 volt indicated by red wires and 3.3 volt indicated by orange wires. You also notice that there's a lot of black wires. These are your grounding cables. And the last thing I was talking about that power supplies are responsible, is, it's responsible for is making sure that your components get clean energy. So this means that they're eliminating voltage spikes, protecting the components from um, over voltage, over current, uh, etc. Just making sure that the parts inside of your computer get uh, clean DC power. All right, so now let's talk about rails for a little bit. The ATX specification for power supplies says that no rail can carry more than 20 amps of power for safety reasons. So what is a rail? A rail is basically uh, a separated branch inside of your power supply, so it's isolated from other rails. This is comparable to in your house, you probably have a uh, circuit breaker with uh, several different circuits for different parts of your house. Electrically, these are not connected to each other. Um, so it works very similar to that. And like I said, the reason for this is generally safety. Uh, setting too much more amperage could potentially be dangerous because uh, the wires will get pretty hot. So what this means is that when you're connecting components, you now not only have to be sure that your components are not going over the wattage specifications or the amperage specifications for your entire C, uh, PSU, but also making sure that whatever particular components you're using are getting enough amperage or enough current um, from whatever rail they're plugged into. So this makes it kind of difficult to make sure that you're plugging all your devices in correctly. A lot of video cards, for example, require far more than uh, 20 amps of current. So how do you deal with that? The answer is you have multiple rails for 12 volts and uh, often two or three and maybe each one is running at 15 amps, let's say. So what you can do is um, your video card will first, be, first off be getting some power directly from the PCI Express bus on the motherboard. The rest of it can come through those auxiliary cables that you plug into it. Uh, these might be on two different rails, for example, and let's say you need 30 amps of, of power. Um, you could be dividing that up between your two wires and if you ensure that they're on different rails from the power supply. But this can still be a little difficult, figuring out what rail um, each wire is on. The best way to do this is, first of all, you can often look up the specifications for the power supply you're using. Um, the back of the power supply usually has a sticker that indicates where the rail divisions are, and that might help you out a little bit. Um, but generally, what power supply manufacturers have been doing now to make it a little bit easier for end users is just disregarding the ATX specifications. So instead of making three 12-volt rails, they'll just make one giant 12-volt rail that has like 50 amps running on it, let's say. And I know you might be thinking, oh, that's probably really unsafe. Those specifications were made for a reason. Um, basically, they've tested this. 
and there have been no more reports of fires or accidents or broken power supplies as a result of using a single rail over several 12-volt uh, rails. So it's really fine to do this. Um, and it'll make the process a lot easier for end users because you don't have to worry about what rail you're connected to. And so as a result, you just plug in, let's say, your video card, for example, and it'll just work as long as you have the right amperage for that single 12-volt rail on your power supply. So my personal suggestion is get a single rail power supply. It takes a lot of the guesswork out. Um, however, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you want to get a three volt, a three rail power supply. You can do that. Just make sure that you'll be able to hook up the connections in such a way that you'll be getting the right amount of amperage for your video card or whatever other component you're worried about. So that's basically it for rails. Um, I know that they can be a little confusing, so if you have any questions, feel free to post in this video and ask, or uh, register at ultimatecomputers.net and uh, post your question about them. So. Next, I'm going to be talking about all the connectors and stuff, but I'm going to do that in the next video. So be sure to go check out the next video, and uh, let me know if you have any future suggestions for episodes of TechBits. Thanks for watching, and go check out the other video.